Beautiful, Sean. So where does the globe come into it? Why do you think you're on a globe? Where does that even come into it? Well, the angles to Polaris prove it. Prove what? That we're on a globe? Using no, a section that, that measures straight baselines? No, that only uh, a one degree per 16, 69 mile drop is is possible on a sphere. Not possible at all on a flat Earth. So that's absolutely what we see in all cases. Every one degree away from the GP, away from the 90 degree angle right. is 69 miles. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what you're going to stand behind? Right. What happens and when... What happens when the, the star gets below 15 degrees to the horizon and we do not see one degree drop per yeah, 69 we do. miles? Absolutely we do. If so we did not see that, it. then nobody could set up an equatorial telescope correctly. Fantastic. So refraction's not a thing now for below 15 degrees? Yeah, it we, is. We but when you're looking straight up, when you're looking up at a higher than 25 degree angle, refraction isn't a problem. No, no, no. I'm talking about lower than 15 degrees here, Sean. You're saying that this holds true okay. no matter what the observation is. Below 15 degrees, is there no refraction? Right. Your circuit, your your rotational point, Polaris, will be at your latitude, north of, north of the uh, uh, equator and a little bit south. What about below 15 degrees? What about yes, measuring absolutely. something below 15 degrees? Yeah. Is that moving at one degree per 69 miles? Yes, if you move 69 miles away from north, that will move down one degree in your in your sight. So when it mm -hmm. goes from, say, 10 degrees to 9 degrees, you're going to measure a one degree drop if you yes. move 69 miles? Yes, if you are at nine degrees latitude, Polaris will be at nine degrees above the horizon. That's an undisputable fact. And it's not possible Fantastic. on a flat Earth at all. Fantastic, Sean. That that we have been Prove trying it. to trap Prove you it. into this for so long. Prove me wrong. Oh, we will. Don't worry. We've got the video. <laughs> and here it is again at uh, one quarter speed. Now, if you look carefully at the leading star of the two stars, when it hits a red dot or a green line, uh, it's going to be exactly the same as the uh, the second mark on the time code. So here it is coming up on the five second. So five, six. So it's showing that these lines are spaced exactly one second apart. And as you can see, they get significantly, 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 significantly closer together as you get closer to the horizon. So what would this look like if it was uh, actually going at a constant speed? Well, let's add some blue dots showing what would happen. Comparing the actual positions in the red dots with the extrapolated positions in the blue dots, you can see how far behind. You can see how far behind. You can see how far behind the star is lagging behind its actual geometric position, the blue dot. Here's a close-up of the final situation, showing just how far this star's visual position is behind the actual position. Yes, if you move 69 miles away from north, that will move down one degree in your in your sight. You can see how far behind. You can see how far behind. You can see how far behind the star is lagging behind its actual geometric position, the blue dot. Yes, if you move 69 miles away from north, that will move down one degree in your in your sight. You can see how far behind. You can see how far behind. You can see how far behind the star is lagging behind its actual geometric position, the blue dot. <laughs> Time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for 